My name is Nicholas Wheeler and um, I'm Director of the Institute for Conflict, Cooperation and Security at the University of Birmingham. My colleague Edward Newman recently wrote a piece for the uh, magazine Original uh, on the theme of uh, saving humans by military force. Uh, Edward's work on the responsibility to protect uh, is an important part of the research work taking place within ICCS uh, in relation to this broader theme of saving humans which the university uh, under the banner of the Institute for Advanced Studies is now taking forward. In 2005, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a very important declaration uh, called the Responsibility to Protect, which fundamentally uh, set limits to the uh, legitimate uh, right of sovereign states to uh, commit uh, uh, mass atrocity crimes within their borders and which put in place a framework for international action to prevent those situations occurring in the future. And the research that we're trying to do in the Institute is geared to trying to understand better how we can both prevent humanitarian emergencies but also stop them when they begin so that we don't keep finding ourselves in situations such as we did during the 1990s with the Rwandan genocide, uh, the situation in Kosovo and now of course more latterly with Libya and Syria where the international community finds itself drawn into armed intervention in varying different forms. But sometimes, of course, recognising that force might be the right thing to do. The international community has been extremely bad at this in the past. For example, in April 1994, the world stood by when a genocide took place in Rwanda, when arguably Western states had the military capabilities to, if not prevent that genocide, certainly to stop it significantly from leading to the loss of life that it did lead to. Saving humans by military force is a very important part of the work that we're engaging in, we'll continue to engage in, but we're also doing important work on nuclear proliferation and trying to save humans from the, from the threat of nuclear catastrophe. And my own work in particular looks at the challenges of building trust between nuclear adversaries. So it's a broader agenda within the Institute, very much committed to producing world-leading academic research but which can also have an impact on, on, on global practitioner communities because we certainly see our remit in terms of public policy relevance as wider than uh, the United Kingdom.